Welcome to the Elon Musk Signal Channel. Have you ever wondered why SpaceX's Starship rocket needs 33 Raptor engines while the legendary Saturn V rocket of the Apollo era, or NASA's new SLS rocket only uses five or four main engines? Why does Starship require so many engines? What secrets lie behind SpaceX's unique design? What makes them superior? Let's explore all of this in this video. Let's get started. Whether it's using Starship or SLS, the ultimate goal of the Artemis missions remains to send astronauts to the lunar surface and return them safely to Earth. While the Saturn V rocket completed six missions to the moon, the Apollo and Skylab programs launched a total of 13 Saturn V rockets, including unmanned test flights, Apollo 4, 5, and 6. It's noteworthy that all 65 Rocketdyne F-1 engines of the Saturn V achieved a 100% success rate, but they were used only once, and then discarded. This is a key distinction in design philosophy between the Saturn V and SpaceX's Starship. SpaceX's goal is to fully reuse the Starship and Super Heavy system, akin to the success of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. While the Saturn V was the first and so far only rocket to carry humans beyond low Earth orbit, it was not independently developed. It was an evolution from the Jupiter rockets, originally a research and development vehicle derived from the Redstone rocket family, a medium-range ballistic missile from the 1950s. Initially designed for military purposes, the Redstone and Jupiter rockets were repurposed for space exploration. Following the Soviet Union's Sputnik event, the U.S. intensified the development of the Saturn rockets under the leadership of Wernher von Braun. The Saturn rocket series went through various versions, from C-3 and C-4 to C-5, the goal of sending humans to the moon. The Saturn C-5, with its five powerful F-1 engines, became the legendary design that carried American astronauts on the historic Apollo missions. The F-1 engine, producing 7.6 million pounds of thrust, was designed to propel the enormous Saturn rockets to the moon. However, engineers encountered a serious vibration issue early in testing, known as unstable combustion. This phenomenon caused severe oscillations in the combustion chamber, potentially damaging the engine and jeopardizing the Apollo program. To address the problem, engineers experimented with various methods. Ultimately, they devised a solution using baffles on the engine's injector plate to dampen vibrations. This improvement allowed the F-1 to achieve high stability, capable of dampening vibrations within one-tenth of a second, ensuring safe and reliable operation. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union also faced similar vibration issues, but their engineers implemented a different approach. They configured the engine into a single fuel pump turbine unit, supplying several smaller combustion chambers, typically four. While this method reduced vibrations, complicated the engine, and increased costs. Later, they continued this concept with smaller engines for their own lunar rocket version, the N1, reportedly more powerful than the US, S Saturn V. The N1 utilized 30 smaller, more efficient engines with a specific impulse of 331 seconds compared to the F1's 263 seconds. They employed a different thrust direction approach, keeping the engines fixed and adjusting thrust in each cluster. However, this made it more prone to risks due to its dependency on control systems. In contrast, the Saturn V used five large F1 engines. Hydraulic gimbal joints for the four outer engines provided stability, less affected by engine failures. Nevertheless, while the design of the N1's 30 smaller engines reduced risks in case one or two engines failed, Losing just one of Saturn V's five large F-1 engines meant an immediate 20% thrust reduction. This almost certainly would lead to mission aborts due to insufficient thrust to achieve the desired orbit. However, due to budget constraints and a lack of infrastructure to fully test the colossal N-1 rocket, only about one-sixth of the engines were actually tested. The rest were installed directly from the production line onto the rocket. The launches themselves served as real-world tests, somewhat akin to SpaceX's motto of build fast and accept risks. The outcome was that all four initial launches of the N1 ended in failure. Today, SpaceX is employing a similar design approach for its Starship Heavy rocket, using up to 33 Raptor engines. This isn't entirely new. Falcon 9 utilizes nine Merlin engines, while Falcon Heavy employs three booster stages, each with nine engines. 
totaling 27 engines, highly reliable launch system in history. However, SpaceX's choice of many small engines over a few large engines is largely driven by reusability. In the past, rockets were used only once and then discarded, resulting in significant waste. Elon Musk has likened this practice to buying a car and using it only once before discarding it. This is why SpaceX focuses on reusable rocket designs. Hence, SpaceX's massive Super Heavy booster also utilizes numerous smaller engines. During descent, SpaceX's Super Heavy booster employs a many moves, less thrust strategy to leverage the advantages of both large and small engines. At high altitudes, traveling at speeds around 1200 km per hour, all 13 engines operate to reduce speed. As it nears the ground with speeds below 10 km per hour, only three engines remain active, capable of modulating thrust and providing flexible guidance for precise landing control, enabling the rocket to be reused multiple times. Additionally, manufacturing smaller engines like SpaceX's Efficient Raptor is significantly more effective than producing large engines like the F-1. The F-1 engine was handcrafted with thousands of welds, whereas the Raptor engine leverages modern manufacturing techniques, reducing the necessary components by 80 to 90 percent. As a result, production rates reach approximately one Raptor engine per day, with projected costs falling below $250,000 per engine. In contrast, the F-1, although simpler, incurred higher costs due to heavy reliance on manual labor. Estimated production costs for an F-1 engine at the time were equivalent to $15 million in today's prices. Despite the F-1 engines being used only once and left discarded in the Atlantic Ocean, they were actually designed for up to 10 reuses. In tests, one engine even fired 20 times, with a total operating time of 2,256 seconds while another achieved 34 firings totaling 2,113 seconds. In actual flights, the F-1 operated for only about 159 to 165 seconds. If recovered safely, the F-1 engines could indeed have been reused multiple times. SpaceX's philosophy of using multiple engines not only provides necessary thrust for liftoff, but also allows for better control during the landing of both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship spacecraft. Interestingly, the modern SLS rocket utilizes RS-25 engines inherited from the Space Shuttle program, originally designed for reuse, but now they are used only once and discarded, echoing the fate of the F-1 engines in the past. Ironically, the only reusable parts on the SLS are the solid rocket boosters, which are structurally much simpler. In summary, the SLS retains the easy parts and discards the complex ones. However, the key lies in how manufacturers achieve their goals. While Saturn V and SLS use fewer large engines to generate tremendous thrust quickly, Starship employs numerous smaller engines, enabling better thrust control and fuel efficiency during flight. This is particularly advantageous for longer missions to the Moon and potentially Mars in the future. And those are the noteworthy details covered in today's video. Stay tuned for more exciting updates from SpaceX on their journey to conquer space. Thank you for watching. Please leave your comments on today's broadcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to catch more interesting videos on the Elon Musk Signal channel. Goodbye and see you again.